Joining me now is in from D.C. is former RNC chair Michael Steele and congressional reporter for BuzzFeed, Kate Nocera. Chairman Steele, let me, let me just say, I guess we've come someplace now that uh, a bill to keep the government open is something Congress may not actually have to litigate, so that's maybe a good sign? Well, I don't know. Right. <laughs> it's baby steps here. <laughs> but, but, you know, I wonder if you think, tactically speaking, that continued um, sort of... Uh, repeals for for theatrics only repeals of the ACA are the way to win back the Senate this year uh, for, uh, from a pure political standpoint in yeah. certain uh, certain states yeah it, it is the card that's going to be played because it puts uh, uh, Democrats in red states running for the Senate in a very uh, noxious position um, now what we've seen also Alex is certain senators uh, or at least candidates beginning to push back on and beginning to run with, into the wind of the ACA and actually put out campaign commercials touting, you know, this idea that, you know, this has been good for the country. So it'll be interesting to see how it ultimately plays out. But from a political standpoint, it, it makes sense for the Republicans to play the cards that they have. I personally would not necessarily rely exclusively on that <laughs> card. Uh, but, you know, uh, but some in, in leadership believe that that's going to be their way to, to uh, winning the Senate this fall. You know, Kate, Jonathan Chait points out that the, the president is set to do a bunch of other things that Republicans in another parallel universe would be happy to take issue with and run on, including his long-awaited EPA rules on EPA regulations. And also, the White House has been hinting that they're going to announce two big things relating to immigration. There is a narrative that the conservatives have tried to construct, which is that this is an imperial presidency. Those right. two things would seem to fit quite neatly into that narrative. I will take issue with the narrative itself, but nonetheless, Unless they fit neatly into that narrative and yet it doesn't feel like at least from this moment that they're going to be campaign issues for 2014. Well, I think that, especially with immigration, the Republicans are in such a sort of strange position. We've seen leadership come out uh, in the last weeks over the break, Boehner making his comments in Ohio, Kathy McMorris Rogers coming out and talking, touting immigration, and yet I, I don't see any chance of that really happening you know, right now or really in the near future. And if it's going to happen, it's going to have to be kind of in the next couple months if they're going to strike any kind of deal. It's a, it's a strange position to be in and you see, you know, you see a lot of Republicans kind of running against the president on immigration, but wanting immigration to reform to happen. I mean, the next couple of weeks are gonna be, it, 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 we're in campaign season, we're in full-fledged campaign season, and that's kind of where all the messaging is gonna come from both the Senate and the House. You, Michael, <laughs> uh, Michael, no, Ted, Michael's, Mr. Michael's Steele. <laughs> um, Chairman, you know, Boehner's comments flabbergasted me. Um, not just the, the, what he was saying, but how he said it. The mocking, dismissive, um, cantankerous tone he was taking with members of his own party. And I wonder, yep. you know, I'm sure there are plenty of Republicans that actually agree with him, both inside the halls of Congress and outside. Did he do a service to the party in saying that stuff, or did he do a disservice? I think he did. I, I, and I, I applauded him for actually uh, saying it the way he said it, because that's exactly how it is. Uh, Speaker Boehner recognizes and understands that he's got to get something done this year. And, and the one thing you want to get done on is immigration. There's a real window of opportunity here for Republicans going into midterm elections that, you know, at the beginning of the year were, were touted as a slam dunk, which I've, I suspect by the time we get to Labor Day won't be as much as a slam dunk as people think. And so this card is an important card to play. So to, to lay out very honestly, you know, I'm dealing with a caucus that's whining to me, oh, don't let us do this. We can't and vote on this. I think that's a, I think that's his frustration really coming through now in trying to move the agenda for certain uh, aspects of the Republican agenda, such as it is on immigration. Uh, and certainly, you saw the response to Jeb Bush's, um, uh, you know, ideas on on the subject. Again, uh, there's a window of opportunity that the, the Republican is, themselves are closing, which I think is frustrating some in leadership right now. But Kate, you know, I guess um, to a certain degree, every time, and you pointed this out, when when the word immigration is spoken, it's kind of like the, the vacuum that is the policy side of the Republican aisle is is apparent, right? I mean, right. And, and in the same way, we know that Harry Reid said today he's going to file cloture on a bill to raise the minimum wage. That's not going to go anywhere, but the Senate's going to take a vote on it precisely because it serves as an act of contrast, which is we're trying to do this for the American worker. 
Republicans are either stalling the bill, sitting on it, or doing nothing. Well, I, I think Republicans would argue that they're trying to do things for the American people as well, and they're all right. stalling in the Senate. I mean, that's something that you'll hear again and again. And then you know, things that have bipartisan support, like the, the Keystone Pipeline. I mean, there was a report today in Politico that that might get a vote uh, next week. I, I think both sides are sort of hunkering down right now, deciding what their best plays are leading up to the election. Uh, right. uh, the contrast, they want to contrast with each other. I mean, they, you know, the House Republicans want to move on, on jobs bills. They want to continue to talk about repealing Obamacare because that's their position and that's what their, their base likes. It's the same thing with the Democrats and the Democratic side. Chairman Steele, real quick, yeah. the uh, unemployment assistance has expired for 2.3 million Americans. Every week that Congress fails to act, another 70,000 jobless workers lose the lifeline. There are a stack of Republicans in the House that want to do something on this. You think there's any chance John Boehner does something? I, I think there is. I, I think that's one of those, uh, unfortunately to say, it's sleeper issues that uh, will probably see some movement. Uh, but I think Kate is right. I think everybody's kind of uh, jockeying to see what's their best play right now, and they'll see how this plays out. Keep in mind, the budget still hasn't been passed by the Senate uh, uh, committee chair, yeah. Patty Murray. So <laughs> there's on both sides, there's room. It's going to be a busy December. Michael Steele and Kate Nassara, thank you both for your time. That is all for now. Thank I'll see you, you back.